So with ACL injury, there's a, a number of different graphs that we could use to reconstruct an ACL. And as we look back through the history of ACL reconstruction, we initially started with your body's own inner third of your patellar tendon. And then we started looking at other graphs like your hamstrings, tendons, your quad tendon. And we also lo started looking at other people's tendons, such as cadaver graphs or, or graphs from people who've passed away. We typically call cadaver graft or a graft from somebody else allograft. And allograft is something that really sprang up in the 90s and, and had some good initial thoughts around it. But then as we looked at some of the outcome studies in the 2000s, we found that there's likely a higher failure rate of allografts, especially in younger people, than compared to autograft. And this is likely related to your body's ligamentization process. And that big word just means that tendon graft turning into a new ligament for you. And that process is variable and it's dependent upon things that we can't always quantify like your immune system or your system within your body that interprets change. And so we think that the immune system may be the reason that allografts may have a higher failure rate in younger individuals because your immune system may see that as foreign and not incorporate it robustly. And so allograft to me is something that I sometimes have to use in multi-ligament knee injuries or when people tear their ACL, PCL, and the MCL all at one time, then, then we don't have enough graft to go around and we have to use allograft. But for just ACL reconstruction, when it's just an ACL reconstruction, I avoid allograft because to me it's a variable. The variable of your immune system as well as the variable of how it's going to respond to that graft makes me nervous and for that reason I always choose autograft if I can. Choosing a graft for a patient is really dependent upon the individuality of the patient, whether it be age, whether it be what sport they prefer, also what job they perform as well. For instance, with a patellar tendon graft, which is from the front of the knee, the central third of the patellar tendon, if you have to do an occupation where you're on your knees for a long period of time during the day, you may have some pain in the front of your knee. For that reason, in those patients, I tend to use a hamstring graft. Alternatively, for the majority of my patients, I do prefer the patellar tendon graft. For our younger patients, though, they have open growth plates at some point, at some time, in some instances. In those instances, I tend to use a hamstring graft or a quadriceps graft. So with ACL reconstruction, it is true that if we take autograft, you do have some more pain after the surgery. And that may not necessarily be a bad thing. <laughs> when we go back to thinking about allograft, and, and there are some higher failure rates in some studies in younger patients, one of the problems is they probably don't hurt in terms of that three week, that four week, that six week time point, and they may go back to activities before the graft has had time to mature. And so some of the discomfort that you have after a surgery slows you down a little bit, which is good in terms of allowing your body to heal.